what, 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 yes, yes, what, 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 what do you want? Shane Dawson is back. And I'm not joking this time. What, what do you mean he's back? There's no way Shane Dawson, out of all people, is back. After all the things he did and never took accountability for, there's no way he's back. I'm about to piss off a lot of Shane Dawson stands, ain't I? Uh, yep, you sure are. Things follow me. Like, I guess you don't know that. Things follow me, Chris. The way you said that was so scary. <laughs> so, hi. Never thought this year I would be making this video, but it has finally happened, my friends. Shane Dawson is back. This isn't clickbait, he's really back. I'm pretty sure this video is gonna be on trending. Not my video, I'm talking about Shane's video. Pretty sure it's on trending at this point. I have words, I have clips, I have thoughts, I have Twitter reactions. Without further ado, let's start this video. Hey, what is up everybody? Yes, I return to your phone, your computer, your TV, your tablet, your laptop. I don't know what you're watching me on right now, but well, welcome back and it's spooky season, so it's me, it's Malcolm, and today. Today, we're finally here. It's finally happened. We're finally talking about it. Shane Dawson is finally back. And this was a video titled, The Haunting of Shane Dawson. At first, I wasn't gonna talk about this video at all because yes, Shane Dawson is back. Well, really talking about him being back really isn't much. However, I did read a lot of reactions on Twitter that he did address like the things he was canceled for uh, last year. We're gonna analyze that stuff and we're just gonna have thoughts because if you are from Twitter and you were in my Twitter space today, you, you clearly see I had a lot of words to say and I just had a lot of thoughts. That's why this video is here because I, as an old Shane Dawson fan, not really have a right to talk about this, but just seeing who Shane Dawson really is and seeing this persona that he's putting on, I don't know why more people aren't accepting the fact that this is a fake Shane Dawson persona. Let's just talk about this video. As you probably have guessed, Shane Dawson has a new cameraman. His name is Chris. And like the shots, like the video starts off after like the little 30 second like preview saying this is a three part series. It just goes into this long shot. Uh, Chris the cameraman goes into the to Shane's house. Shane's pretending to play the piano and all this stuff. And like, it's a joke. And then Shane says this. Hi, <laughs> I learned piano during my break. <laughs> Kidding, I didn't learn anything. <laughs> no, I learned a lot about myself. Oof. Um, hi. Hi. I don't know how to do this. I haven't filmed a video in uh, almost two years. So, Shane says, I've learned a lot about myself, meaning he thinks he's grown since the last time he posted a video. Never mind you, Shane Dawson really hasn't left the internet. He's been here and there. We'll get to that eventually. I like how he's like, yeah, I've learned a lot. You'll see very quickly, Shane Dawson hasn't really learned much or anything at all. This next clip I'm gonna play just kind of proves my point that Shane Dawson didn't really learn anything because he thinks his cancellation is a joke. Like him and Jeffree Star have pretty much made a mockery out of like, last year and like this year just they seem very oblivious to the fact that why people have an issue with them i'm not gonna say anything else because like his actions can speak more than my words ever could so here's a clip just for you we say i'm sorry yes we do don't worry i'll get to that um <laughs> we, <laughs> oh gosh we make we make mistakes uh-huh yes we do <laughs> i'll get to that we forgive quickly. How about you get to that? <laughs> okay, now you, you can hate me. If you hate me, honestly, I feel better that way. Cause it's like lowering the bar. Do you know what I mean? Sure. Cause I finally don't really care anymore what other people think about me, except for myself. 
but I don't really like me either, so <laughs> we're in a weird place. <laughs> Shane Dawson thinks this is a whole joke. He thinks this cancellation is a joke. You couldn't get that energy. I don't know what to tell you. It's pretty evident that he really doesn't care. He thinks it's the most funniest thing in the world. A lot of people are gonna be like, well, he's coping. And I'm like, well, he wouldn't have to cope with anything if he didn't do anything wrong in the first place. See how that works out? You can't do one thing without the other thing. He wouldn't make fun of cancellation if he didn't realize that he was canceled for something. Can't get canceled for nothing. He actually did do something wrong which he addresses, but not really. And you'll see why, what I mean very soon. So now we get to the part where he starts going at, back into the old Shane Dawson where he's making self-deprecating jokes, uh, making like, I wanna say inappropriate jokes. And this is one of them I feel is inappropriate. And you'll see what, what I mean very shortly. Like this is a very clip hairy first half. So I do apologize if you hate a bunch of clips. You'll see what I mean when I talk about my points later. So let me just roll this one clip for you and I'm not gonna like preface it by saying what I felt was inappropriate. I'll just roll the clip for you and let you see for yourself. So, is that it? I, I went to TikTok and literally, like I loved it for a week and then it got canceled and I couldn't go on it anymore. <laughs> Cause it was like, every time I'd swipe it would be like, ba -ba -da, and then I'd swipe up and it'd be like, Shane Dawson needs to kill himself. And I'm like, all right, well let's just get back to that whip. <laughs> Um, so for those that don't know, TikTok is probably one of the most strict social media apps I have ever seen um, because saying things like that get you in like an Insta ban. It's like really hard to say whatever you want to say on TikTok because TikTok monitors it so heavily. So Shane Dawson saying what he said, I felt like it was completely out of place. And also he really didn't need to bring that up because Yes, there are probably some people that are wishing that upon him. It's not the majority. And just to even say it and then put a national suicide hotline in your description seems kind of tasteless to me. Yes, he does talk about later on about that subject, but like in a more serious way. This part right here, it felt very unnecessary to anything. And like, that's pretty much what like this first couple minutes of this video is. It felt, it feels like filler and very unnecessary because he literally doesn't talk about anything until like the seven minute mark. And again, coping mechanisms, yes, they are a thing, but someone as big as Shane Dawson should realize joking around about things like that when he does have young and impressionable fans, that can leave a damaging mark for some, not all, not even probably the majority, but there are some that that joke probably triggered and affected. I'm still trying to see where Shane Dawson has learned and changed. Still waiting on that. Like, I don't have a clue. Next, he finally starts getting into the old clips and stuff that, again, he never really fully addressed in his last video on his channel. It seems like, and he's trying to spin this narrative of like, the videos made him feel so bad and so awful. But like, again, if people didn't call it out, he would have not deleted the video. Does that make sense? I have to talk about some stuff. Um, it's weird, I, I don't know. It's like, I definitely feel ashamed and embarrassed and horrified over a lot of the stuff that started, you know, old clips and stuff that started coming out when I got canceled and then all of that, awful. Then it snowballed and, but I, I don't wanna like, it's weird, cause if I talk about it, how I really feel, people are gonna say, oh, you're trying to get sympathy or whatever. So I, I like don't wanna talk about it. I feel like people are just gonna hate me no matter what. And I kind of just have to accept it. And then there's gonna be people who appreciate what I do. And then there's gonna be people who are gonna say I died and then people are gonna leave it. And then um, I'm not dead. What if I was? Sorry. That's an idea. <laughs> Sorry. Just can you imagine? Like, you dying? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but no, but I come back from the dead and like, here's my new series. Um, <laughs> whew, okay, it's time. <laughs> this is the problem when people say, I feel bad for blank. It's because they feel bad that they got caught. There is a difference. 
if Shane Dawson deleted all those videos on his own and like he explained after why he deleted them, I don't, I think a lot of us would not have an issue with that, nor would we be talking about how he really didn't take accountability for anything. It's the fact that he deleted the videos years upon years after he left them up. That is the problem that people have with Shane Dawson. If Shane Dawson took it upon himself to figure out the issue and take action, I think a lot of people will be satisfied, but it's the fact that he's making it seem like he learned his lesson, even though he really didn't, because if you probably watched the video already, you can see that he's made constant jokes throughout the video about being canceled, and it seems like doesn't affect him the way he says it does, but I digress. So something I did notice in like, this is like, I don't wanna say this is a manipulation tactic, but this is like a, oh my God, guys, like, like, this is so wholesome. This video is so wholesome. This video feels like a disguised house tour. And what I mean is, you really start out from the front. Like, if you watch the video, it'll make more sense. But let me describe it for those that have it. So, it starts off, the cameraman, Chris, is outside. He's kind of panning the house, going down the driveway, through the walkway, through the front door, where Shane and the piano are. Then they walk into the kitchen and says, this is my kitchen starts talking there and now they're shifting to another room and they shift throughout pretty much the whole house except like Shane's bedroom and like I think the backyard uh in this video but pretty much the video itself felt like a glorified house tour just under the ruse of an accountability video and also a three-port spooky series video because it is spooky season so of course, Shane Dawson is doing a paranormal type of video. Now, later on in the video, Ryland does show up, like he's in the basement or he's watching Instagram. Uh, he brings up Emma Chamberlain and the Dolan twins. And like later on in this conversation sequence, he makes a joke about how Ryland didn't leave him, thus implying a lot of people were telling Ryland to leave Shane. Now, I'm not gonna say that didn't happen, but a lot of people, just wanted Shane to be accountable. They really, for the most part, a lot of people never said, hey, Riley, you should leave Shane or like, you guys should break up. I'm not saying it didn't happen. When looking into it, it seems like Shane Dawson is making jokes about things people never said, a way to be like, oh my God, people were saying these things about me and like, I'm just bringing it up, but like he makes it into a joke. He's making fun of this cancellation. If you can't see it at this point, I can't, I can't help you. This video is not for a Shane Dawson stan. So um, you can exit this uh, video stage left or right. I don't know which way my fingers are pointing. I think that's, I think that's y'all's right. And this is y'all's left. And like, this is my left and this is my right. Did I throw y'all off? My bad, anyway. <laughs> and this part of the video got me because I've watched Shane's videos in the past and I know for a fact, this is a lie. So Riley brings up the question of, hey, is this video the one that I watched? Is this video sponsored? So Shane says, oh, of course not, making another joke about being canceled. And then he says, well, I really didn't get that many sponsors anyway. So I had to really take a pause when he said that. And I was like, did Shane really not get sponsors? Because literally I remember for almost every conspiracy video, he either had uh, Honey as a sponsor or like another big name sponsor and like Honey only sponsors like the big 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 YouTubers it's like implied that Honey pays a lot and like I think Shane Dawson also had better help back in the day which I don't want to get into the better help thing because that's a whole <laughs> that's a whole thing Woo! so Shane Dawson has had a bunch of sponsors I don't know what exactly he's talking about maybe in the beginning of his YouTube career he didn't have sponsors but near the tail end he had like the big names so I don't know why he said that when literally in his conspiracy videos he has like dedicated like sponsors well not dedicated sponsors because that would include the whole video he would have to talk about it but like he did a long promotion for like Honey and things like that. And another thing I really wanna note is that maybe I just haven't watched YouTube videos or like, like YouTube vlogs in such a long time, but the music itself throughout this whole video just seemed like 
really, really loud. So I don't know if Shane was editing it or Chris, the camera was editing this, but like the music was kind of, it was hard to focus on like things Shane was saying or like what Rylan was saying because like the music would either change really fast and it was like really abrupt and it kind of threw me off guard or like the music was so loud that you literally had to like focus on the video itself to like just hear a sentence. So I don't know if that was an editing choice to make you like more engaged with the video, but I didn't like it. I'm just gonna say like the music, the music choice, whatever that was, it bothered me. That's all I'm gonna say about that. Now around 16 minutes of the video, Shane says that he was like, he's like very disconnected um, from the person he was and when he made those problematic videos and jokes and things like that. And then he said himself that he's come to peace with the fact that he can't pretend like that person didn't exist. Then he goes on to talk about how he feels he made all this growth and now like how being canceled really affected him. I want to reiterate, Shane Dawson has come to peace with himself about the problematic things he did. Coming to peace with what? Again, he skates around what he said and things that he did. And he actually left out a lot of things that he's never going to bring up again. Don't worry, I'll bring it up for you. Just gonna have to wait a little bit later for me to talk about that. So he's come to peace with himself. Never mind the people that he affected or anything like that. But he's come to peace with himself. So makes him feel better. I just wanna play this clip for you. This is like two minutes later in the video. I don't wanna preface it. <laughs> because I've never heard somebody say this. I've never heard a YouTuber say this in any type of accountability video, accountability or apology. I've never heard a YouTuber say this. I'm gonna play the clip. I'm not gonna preface it. Y you'll hear it and you're gonna be like, he did not just say that. Yes, he did. Roll the clip. I mean, I can't control how people react when I'm getting canceled. People in my life, like I can't control if they're scared for their own career, for their own thing. And you know, I was very like, it was really hard. But I learned a lot and I feel like I'm so happy it happened. So grateful that I got canceled because it really changed my life. It showed me what I care about, it showed me what matters. It showed me I don't need to be on YouTube all the time. I don't need to be stressed about what's next. I don't need to be trying to think of the next idea, the next whatever to be happy. Like I'm happy sitting in this weird dark living room with him, you know, watching candle reviews. Like that makes me happy and I wanna make movies, and I wanna get creative again. But those aren't at the top of my priority list, if that makes sense. Shane Dawson said he's grateful that he got canceled. He said he's grateful <laughs> that he got canceled. I'm just, I'm just gonna say that one more time. He said he's grateful that he got canceled. I can't expand on that. I can't really say anything else about that. I'm just gonna leave that. Okay. And then I thought it was a little bit shady. I thought it was a little bit shady because I was wondering if he was ever gonna bring up like Garrett, Andrew's old cameraman, Drew Monson, who just came back, I think like a month ago. Um, I thought he was gonna address them like individually. Um, in that clip I showed, he said something along the lines of, like, I understand that like for, for like for their own careers, like people have people feel how they wanna feel. And that just says to me, like I could be reading too much into it, but that says to me that Garrett, Andrew, Drew, like people that used to do videos with Shane all the time, they actually did leave because they knew that associating with Shane Dawson wasn't going to end well. And he makes it seem like he's the victim in all this. Like, I like, yeah, people feel what they want to feel and like people hate me for, for whatever, blah, blah, blah. It feels like this is like, I'm the victim. I'm the victim. I'm canceled. I'm the victim. And it, he sounds like he's whining the whole time about everything. Like, yeah, I'm so grateful to be canceled, but like, like people are gonna hate me like if they want to like people are gonna hate me like if they want to hate me and i'm just like you're missing the point it's like you don't have a clue a blues clue 
Sorry, I had to make a joke just to ease the tension a little bit. Did that make you laugh? If it didn't, you can leave a dislike if you, if you hated that joke. I'm perfectly fine with that. <laughs> the next part, and this, this was like, oh, so you wanna make excuses. Shane Dawson's changed. Okay. He brings up his old clips and stuff, right? And he talks, I think he was talking about how he met Chris as cameraman. Uh, a couple years ago, I want to say like more than 10 years ago, talks about his short films and his like skits and stuff like that. And then he says, you know what? You won't believe me <laughs> or it won't make sense. So I'll just play the clip and then I will talk about it. So here you go. And now looking back, there's jokes in them and there's things in them that like I would never do now, but I shouldn't just throw all that stuff away when it kind of got me to where I am and it also connected with people. And yeah, there was bad stuff in those videos, but like the good stuff connected with people. And I can't just throw that away. That's, that's weird. And to the people who are still upset and don't want me to be around, and I understand. And, and this is, I'm not gonna talk about this anymore because I don't want my whole life to just be me talking about this, which is why I haven't talked about it in the last year and a half. I wasn't ready to, but also, I don't want that to just be the thing I'm constantly bringing up. Yeah, I'm not gonna run from my past, but I'm also not gonna stay in it. Like, I'm not just gonna live in there because that I've already come to terms with and I feel like it would be unhealthy for me to just constantly think about it. So now it's, well, yeah, those clips were bad, but some of parts were good, so I can't really disavow all of it. I just, I just, I, I just, I just, I just think sometimes do people think before they speak? That's literally giving an excuse or giving a justification for your videos. Like, yeah, my videos are bad and I probably said like something racist in them, but I made someone feel good. What about the people you didn't make feel good? What about the people that you affected with that video? So he's picking and choosing like his like points. And again, he, this isn't taking accountability for your video if you're trying to justify those type of videos. You can't say, oh, well, pe other people were so fine with it and like it touched people and like it made them feel good. But if the same kind of video made other people feel bad, you can't say, well, I can't throw the whole thing away. Now there's a difference if you made like a minor joke, but like Shanene, which is Shane's character that he created. It was basically a stereotypical black woman making fun of black like black women stereotypes, things like that. Yes, it probably made one group laugh, but it probably made the other group feel uncomfortable and like profiled. You see what I'm saying? And then the last clip I want to show, it just, it just, this is Shane Dawson trying to get sympathy points. And I just, it just blows my mind that so many people are so accepting of Shane just coming back being the same person he didn't change if you watch the video he didn't change this whole oh my god i feel so bad blah 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 that whole persona that's not that's not who shane dawson is i will show you who shane dawson is in a clip later on shane dawson goes on to talk about how he didn't want to be looked at that the person that quit or whatever and i'm just gonna play the clip because like again his actions could say it better than my words ever could. So, here you go. I don't want to be looked at as somebody who gave up and left and ran away from the internet because they were afraid of whatever. It's like, no, I left because I felt like I should. And I left because I needed time. And I left because I wanted to figure out what the hell I was doing in my life and what I wanted to do. And why I got to a place where I didn't want to be alive anymore. And why, how I got out of that. He's making it seem like him leaving was his choice. Did anybody else pick up that? Because last time I remember, people told Shane Dawson to go away. If Shane, if Shane wasn't being canceled, of course he would stick around. If the majority of people weren't upset at Shane Dawson, he would stay. Because he's already talked about how every two or three years, something comes up and people hate Shane Dawson. I find it funny that now he's trying to turn his cancellation into a positive experience like, oh my God, yes, I chose to leave. I chose to figure out what I wanted to do. And I'm like, it's been revealed through people like Trisha Paytas, who is Shane's old friend. Shane was planning multiple, multiple comebacks, but they always got like sidelined because somebody else came up with more information. He's trying to make it seem like, well, y'all didn't cancel me, I canceled myself, kind of like how Jenna Marbles did. As we all know, 
Shane Dawson's whole accountability video fell flat in space because he really didn't address anything. It seemed more like this was Shane Dawson's way of creating excuses and sympathy from his fans because he knows that his fans will defend him. So the rest of the video is pretty much what the video is about. Um, it's about uh, paranormal stuff. Uh, it's about Shane Dawson having a ghost attached to him, things like that. So if you're into paranormal and you're a fan of Shane Dawson, or whatever, go for it. I'm not gonna stop you from watching this video. That's not what I'm here to do. But I did see enough things that really caught my eye and really caught my attention that of course I had to talk about it. Let's talk about some things Shane Dawson didn't bring up in this video and let's really talk about it. One of the main, main things that Shane Dawson really didn't bring up and I was hoping he would or maybe even like publicly apologize is the Instagram live rant where he watched Tati Westbrook's Breaking My Silence video and he was on Instagram live for like a minute or two and he just berated her like said like her tears were fake and all that stuff for people that are like shane dawson's changed and he never addressed this clip just a just a reminder for people let's play that clip she oh of course is that another ad another ad i'm losing my mind i'm losing my mind this is so f this is oh my god i i okay I'm live because I, I can't even process, I need a drink of water. I fuck can't process this. This is insane. This is insane. This is insane. This woman is a f Oh my God, oh my God. I'm gonna wait till as many people get in here as possible because I'm losing my mind. Keep playing it. Keep playing I it. I was making a video. So how is it that so many editorial outlets knew that something was coming before I had- Because you mess in drama channels! Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I video for days. The night before I did film, Jeffrey sent me what he claimed was an audio file from an alleged victim and told me to listen to the pain in her voice. The audio was clearly a small portion of oh my the god. conversation. It wasn't enough for me to contact the authorities. It was enough to scare me. Well, then why would you make a video on the matter claiming these allegations? Because she is a I can't, I can't. I don't want to say mean things about people. This is insane. This is insane. This person literally, oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, sorry, keep pressing play. I need to get through this video so I can, oh my God. As a victim of abuse myself. Oh my God. Terrified. You are so manipulative. Think of facing public you're fake you're fake crying you are fake crying you are fake crying that is not real oh my god 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 i was i have been on oh my god that is not oh my god the night before posting my video by sister Oh my God. I texted Shane, sharing my concerns for James Charles, that he was out of the country on the high floor of a hotel and I was afraid for him. Yeah, Shane Dawson never addressed that. He never said once that he was sorry to Tati Westbrook and the things that he said about her during his Instagram live rant. He never apologized for that. Oh, did he also forget to apologize to the Smith family for the gross things he did to, uh, Jada Pickett's daughter Willow and that poster where he acted like he was having he acted like he was pleasuring himself to a poster of Willow Smith because I remember that Jada Pickett called Shane Dawson out online to the point where people wrote stories about it but he didn't bring that up and said I apologize to the Smith family didn't do that because he hopes you forgot about that no Shane we didn't forget about that no I don't think a lot of us did also I loved how he made it seem like he was gone for such a long time not even bringing up the fact that he still posted on Instagram stories um he was on the sip with Ryland and Lizzie not too long ago he's actually been editing some of Ryland's videos and his thumbnails didn't bring up that stuff oh 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 by the way he was in a video with Jeffree Star just last week, but he didn't bring that up. And yes, the video might be recorded 
before that video came out. I don't know how long Jeffrey and Shane were planning to release that like clickbait video that they did last week or whatever that was. Seeing how this video that Shane posted was in his house in Colorado and he just recently moved there kind of indicates to me, it's like lying in plain sight. You know what I'm saying? Do we also forget Shane? Shane, I'm talking to you because you have admitted that you watch drama videos about yourself, which is a weird flex, but okay. So Shane Dawson magically forgot about Trisha Paytas. Ah, you didn't think I was gonna bring that up, did you? I know somebody's gonna jump in the comments and say, you're defending Trisha. Trisha's a trash person, blah, blah, blah. I know Trisha is a trash person. However, comma, the things that Harry by Jay said about Trisha Paytas should never be spoken to about anyone, like, ever. Let us also not forget, Hair by Jay is Jeffree Star's hairdresser. And also, Hair by Jay admitted that Jeffree Star is never going to admit to. He admitted Jeffree Star said pretty much the same things as he did about Trisha Paytas. And what did Shane Dawson do? He told Trisha Paytas to come over, eat some food, and just forget about it. Empath, right? But Shane Dawson's changed, right? Because if Shane Dawson changed, he would have distanced himself from Jeffree Star out of all people. Garrett's gone, Andrew's gone, Drew Monson is gone. Morgan's around because that's obviously Rylan's sister. It's not like she's going to distance herself from her brother just to get away from Shane. You know, she's not gonna do that. But just look at the people that aren't around Shane Dawson anymore and then look at the people that are. So my overall thoughts, even though I probably talked about it verbatim throughout this whole video, is that Shane Dawson just seems to not get it. I don't know. There are some people that have been waiting for Shane Dawson to come out again on his channel and address everything. So for those people that were waiting, I hope you got the answers you were looking for. Just seeing how Shane Dawson approached this, I kind of knew he was going to make a joke out of being canceled. And then, like, of course, he was going to put, like, the sad, sad music under the times when he was being serious to convey that he's being serious and being emotional because Swoop, if you remember Swoop, has actually talked about things like this where you pick some type of music like, oh, I want a sad song when I talk about something sad. It was so, I, I like once I watched like the first two minutes and like I was like, oh, here we go. Shane Dawson's gonna make a self-deprecating joke. Then he did. And I was like, oh, here we go. Shane Dawson's gonna like cut the, like the music's gonna cut here, there's gonna be a joke. Like the, the video became so predictable. And you could say that's an insult or whatever, but the video itself became so predictable where I was just like, oh, here we go, Shane Dawson's gonna make a joke. Oh, here we go, the music's gonna cut. Oh, here we go, it's gonna be a random thought. That was pretty much Shane Dawson's video. So I went to Twitter and asked you at home, what did you think? about Shane Dawson coming back and just give me your overall thoughts. I'm just gonna read them straight down. This is pretty much straight down from my Twitter thread. So we have Alice, speaking of, hello Alice, how you doing? I just wanted to say that joke because Alice is a great person. Please go follow her on Twitter and tell her I sent you and said, hello. Alice said, ew. <laughs> One word, simple as that, love it. We have Margie Riley who says, I would just sleep better tonight if I know he ain't have pets no more and that he and his partner are just a fever dream. Basically saying like, I wish this wasn't real. I understand. We have October Ren is back who says he just couldn't help himself but come back. We'll see if there's any change, but yeah, I doubt it. I doubt it too. Princess Unicorn who says, as someone who was a huge fan from a very young age and never saw most of the negative content until he was canceled. I'm hurt by everything and annoyed that he doesn't seem to care at all. And the fact that he's still collabing with certain people prove he hasn't changed or grown. Jeffree Star. He collabed with Jeffree Star. Not to mention that whole cash grab of a palette and how he was like, I'm so into makeup and like, I'm gonna make so many makeup videos and all this stuff. We have Naily who says, no thank you. He hasn't learned or grown and has treated this whole scandal as a joke. Yes, he has. The IG posts, cameos, and overall presence of him since he's left has been nothing but self-serving manipulation. He's still just as 
<laughs> oh wow. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say that part because I mean I mean hey, all right. But she does say uh, that Shane Dawson is fawning over Jeffrey Star and behaving like a wounded deer. The world has outgrown Shane's comedy because Shane Dawson's not funny. I've come to realize that now because watching it, I'm just like, what about Shane Dawson that I think was funny as an old fan? Don't know why I thought I thought it was funny. And our standards for documentary style content has risen. Speaking of Swoop, go subscribe to Swoop if you haven't. I know she has a lot more subscribers than me, but like some of y'all still don't know about Swoop. I like Swoop, go subscribe to Swoop. Love Swoop. Him and his disingenuous fake A husband can kindly F off forever. But that's just my opinion. All right, Nelly, dang. All right, go ahead, dang. We have Alana, I think it's Alana, who says, I've seen clips and so far it's all about how he feels and so shocked at seeing the clips during him being canceled and not how it affected people of color and all the minors he was inappropriate with. The whole accountability thing was like, I feel bad, but he never talks about how it affected others. And he was just like, well, some people were okay with it. And some people like it touched some people. So I can't throw it all away. We have Eva or Ava who says, there are some people that should be the platform. He is one of them. <laughs> I mean, I kind of agree. Well, Shane did lose monetization, and I think he was suspended from the partnership program for a good, good minute. I don't know how many months it was, but I think it was three, three months. If not, he probably had a year and a half suspension. It would make sense because it's been almost a year and a half since he was canceled. Or also, it could have been a year suspension it's never going to be clear how long he was suspended from the partnership program for. I do know he was suspended for a good minute. Um, we have Bree who says, Dear Shane, no. I get it. I, I get it. We have Tax Ship. Speaking of, love Tax Ship. Um, Tax Ship says, I hope the time he spent being gone allowed his audience to see that there are more talented creators out there who didn't pull profit off of racist jokes. Maybe now they can see he's just another mediocre white man who got lucky. Yes. <laughs> and then we have Sarah who says, just ew. All right, Sarah, talk about how you really feel. All right. We have Rainy who says, I'd trade him for Jenna Marbles any day. Bring Jenna back. At this point, I would agree because out of all the people, and I've said this before, and I got a lot of hate for it on Twitter because Jenna Marble fans think I was dragging her, but I wasn't. Out of all the people that have been canceled, like Jenna Marbles was probably the most respectable person. And the fact that people like James Charles, David Dobrik, Tati Westbrook, James Charles, did I say James Charles twice? Yeah, he deserves to be said twice. Shane Dawson now, Jeffree Star, people like that that are still problematic and probably had have had a even worse colorful past than Jenna Marbles is baffling to me that they still feel comfortable enough to come back on the platform and just act like nothing happened. Which I forgot to mention this part. Shane Dawson said this is the last time he's going to be talking about all this, basically saying like I'm moving on. So if you still have a problem with Shane Dawson afterwards, that's your fault basically. That's what he's trying to say to you. We have Tuesday Gray who says. I can't get my full thoughts together at the moment, but I just know he put his name in the title of the video, so his new video will be on top of all the videos calling him out. Or, at the very least, he's taking advantage of the algorithm. It's disappointing to see it trending, even for bad reasons, because I know it's exactly what he wants, his name being spread around. Everyone is talking about his new video. It doesn't matter how unpopular he is, he can still profit off of being unlikable. I agree. Nikita Dragon loves to be problematic but it seems like nikita dragon really got dragged really hard this time i really haven't heard much from nikita dragon in i want to say a month since nikita dragon claimed to be the first trans pop star with that trash song and people really slammed her for it tana mojo like like tana mojo reeves problematic remember TanaCon? she got away with it all these people jeffree star like he even said in her interview i think like like bad publicity is still like 
like it brings in the money. Like at this point, Shane Dawson said he doesn't care how people feel about him except for himself and all that stuff, which we know that's a lie because again, Shane Dawson watches drama videos about himself. So he kind of does care. I don't know why people like Shane Dawson will lie to themselves like that, but go off, I guess. We have Avril who says, I don't get this constantly whining per personality he's doing. It's completely fake and annoying. We're not getting the real Shane yet. I showed you real Shane. It was with that Instagram live. That is the real Shane. You're welcome. We have Ducky Coast who says, just like his movie, his return was not cool. That's funny. <laughs> we have Carr who says, yeah, I don't think he should have, I don't think he should have ever come back. I agree. We have Ali who says, Ali or Ali? I'm gonna say Ali. Looks like an, I think it's an Ali. Ali says, I expected him to return, but I never wanted him to. He doesn't deserve to have a platform and he can't even apologize properly to the people he's hurt. But his fans are young and approachable and will likely welcome him back with open arms saying he's changed. They've already done it. Like if you say something negative in the comments, they're they're going to like bombard you. I think some Shane Dawson stands found my Twitter while I was tweeting about this video and they were just defending him saying, oh my God, well, you have, a, you have a past too and like you made mistakes. So like, how would you feel if we like brought up all your mistakes? Racism is not a mistake. Anyway, we have Kristen who says, I really enjoyed his conspiracy and spooky videos and I watched this and just felt gross question mark. I believe people can change, but I just don't know. There were too many disgusting, unacceptable jokes he has made as a grown man. It's a wait and see if his, if he changes for me. Talk is cheap. Exactly, because like it's all about actions, not words. And then Bree, who's back, says, he's also never actually apologized for any of it. And apologies should be specific, like, I'm sorry for hurting you by doing X, Y, and Z. This was bad and stupid because dot, dot, dot. He's never done anything or said anything actually like that. It's usually just a quick feel bad for me and duck and run. So yeah, like like when I when I talked about how he's really not taking this cancellation thing, he, he thinks it's a whole joke, things like that. I really do mean he thinks it's a whole joke. Like that like you can see it in his persona. Shane Dawson's persona is still the ooh woo boy that he was when he left. The whole self deprecating jokes the jokes about like being dead and things like that and like even putting the national suicide hotline in the bio of his video it, it just it's just so oxymoronic to me personally because you're making jokes about it and like that can trigger some people and i don't think he even put a trigger warning in his video he just said we are discretion advised which is not the same thing but it just, to me, it felt like he still doesn't get it. And like, I don't think he ever will because he said himself, he's never gonna talk about this stuff again. So in the end, where do we go from here? Um, I'm not subscribed to Shane Dawson. I unsubscribed. There's really not much else you can really do except unsubscribe if you're still subscribed. Um, I don't particularly say, hey, don't watch this person or I'm not gonna tell people to unsubscribe from somebody. All I do, I put the information out there you come up with your own conclusions. I probably give some thoughts here and there, but that's pretty much it. But at, at, in the end, in the end, it's up to you what you want to do. I'm not gonna force you to do anything you don't want to do, and that's just the honest truth. Woo! I had a lot to say, and that was a lot. It's like what? It's 10 o'clock right now. This video, I don't know if I'm gonna get this video up tonight. I'm hopefully gonna get it up tonight because I had a lot to say. As an ex Shane Dawson fan, especially seeing him just just seeing the persona and see how fake it is. I do feel stupid for ever supporting someone like that. And I, I'll admit it, I did support him. I openly talk about this all the time. Like I have the pig hoodies and stuff, like they're, they're in my drawer and stuff, but I don't wear it anymore. Like I got my blue scoos on, cause you know, who can go wrong with blue? I mean, it's blue. Yeah, just seeing Shane Dawson, just seeing his persona, just seeing the person he is now is the same person he was back then doesn't surprise me to be honest with you so once again it is malcolm that's me subscription button up here to the videos over there for your own free time without further ado i wish you well i wish you good health and i will see you again next time